Thank you so much, Felicia. Thanks to everybody who has joined this class today. Like Felicia said, my name is McKenna, and I'm going to be your instructor today for this Intro to Silhouette class. So thank you guys so much. So many of you put in the chat where you guys are from, and it's so fun for me to see um, where everybody's tuning in from. And I just think it's really awesome because if this class was in person here in Utah, where Silhouette is located, I would not be able to connect with all of you guys for sure, unless you came here on an airplane and everything like that. Um, so I love being able to teach people from all over the United States. And it looks like today we even have somebody from Costa Rica too. So thank you guys so much for joining me. I'm super excited to be here with you guys today. And this class is very beginner friendly. Um, and because of that, I just kind of want to know what your skill level is with Silhouette. Are you new to Silhouette? Maybe you just bought a machine. Um, maybe you got a machine for Christmas. Maybe you've had a machine for a long time, but you've never gotten it out of the box. Um, so go ahead and put in the chat um, kind of your experience with Silhouette. And um, so that will just help me be able to guide this class. Um, in the direction that you guys are most needing. And if you are more advanced, this class will still be great for you to just kind of refresh everything. Um, and we are just going to be doing a little basic project. So I'd love for you to stay, um, even if you consider yourself an advanced user. But like I said, this is a very beginner friendly class. We're going to take everything nice and slow. And in this class, we are just going to keep it really simple. First off, I'm going to show you the different machines that we have here at Silhouette, the base machines. And then I'm going to show you how to purchase a design from the design store. We'll search for a design and purchase a design. And then I'm going to open it in Silhouette Studio with you. We're going to resize it for our blank that we're gonna be using. And then we're just gonna cut it. And then after that, we're going to use transfer tape to transfer our vinyl design onto our blank that we're using. So I know that sounds like a lot of steps, but it's actually very, very simple. And like I said, we're gonna go really, really slow. So as long as you guys have questions, just drop them in the chat for me. And um, Christina and Kelly are gonna help me out here. And um, I'm just super excited to show you how easy the Silhouette Machine can be because I know it can be a little bit daunting. It looks like um, pretty much everybody is very beginner, which is perfect. I'm so glad you guys found this class and were able to register for it. So let's go ahead and begin by um, talking about the different machines that we have. So the first machine that I want to show you guys is the Cameo 4. This is our flagship machine. It's our most popular model that we have here at Silhouette. And chances are, if you've seen a Silhouette machine, you've probably seen a Cameo. And um, there are four different models of this one, or four different generations, I guess. This is the newest one. It came out in 2019. And um, you can buy this at Michael's. It comes in three different colors, white, pink, or black. And um, the white is the most popular. That's what we're using today. And this machine can cut 12 inches in width and up to 10 feet in length. It also has a um, pull out drawer right here that will pull out that you can place your vinyl roll in, um, that you can cut this vinyl mat list. That is a feature to Silhouette that's unique is that you can cut any brand of vinyl mat list on our machines. We don't necessarily make you use our vinyl, um, so you can use your favorite brand that you can pick up at Michael's. So that's a fun feature, that little pull-out drawer. Um, you can also use specialty tools. Right here, we have the auto blade in here, and that's the blade that will come with your machine when you purchase it. And this cuts most of your materials like heat transfer, vinyl, cardstock, paper, sticker paper, things like that. But then you can also purchase additional tools like the rotary blade or the craft blade, which are made to cut felt, fabric, um, leather, craft foam, things like that. So that is another option you can do with the Cameo 4. And then I also want to show that it has a little drawer right here. Oh, that coincidentally has a rotary blade in it. So this little rotary blade is literally just a miniature rotary blade like you, that you would buy at the craft store or the sewing store um, to cut fabric with. It's just a miniature version. Um, so if you're going to use this blade, you just go ahead and pop this in the second carriage. And all of the tools either have a number one on it or a number two, which might be kind of hard to see um, on your screen, um, but that's how you know which slot they coincide with. So I'm glad that that tool was in there. I actually did not know that that was in there. 
And then the last thing I want to show you on the Cameo 4 that's a really, really awesome feature is called the um, cross cutter on the back. And I'm going to show you this, or actually we're not going to be cutting matless today. So I'm not going to show you this, but if you are cutting matless, you can feed your vinyl through the back, your vinyl or heat transfer material. And then you can pop these little tabs down and then slide this across and it will give you a nice straight cut on your vinyl roll. Um, so that is a super awesome feature with cutting matless that I love a lot. So does anybody have any questions about the Cameo 4? Um, if you have any questions, go ahead and put them in the chat and let me know also if you're a Cameo 4 user. I'm a Cameo 4 user at home. I have a Cameo 4. Um, here at Silhouette, I kind of have used all of the machines here in the office, um, but the Cameo 4 is what I use at home. So it's a super awesome machine, very versatile, um, can cut tons of materials and you can use it to make so many different things. Oh, we have a pro user. Awesome. We're going to be looking at that in a second. And then Tunisia said she had no idea that those features existed. So I'm super glad we were able to show you some new things. Okay, and then Kelly has the Cameo 4, awesome. And Chandra has the Cameo 4 also. Um, yes, so somebody asked about the auto feeder. We don't have one in here right now, um, but you can look that up on our website too. That's an accessory that goes with the Portrait 3 or the Cameo 4. And then there's also one that goes with the Cameo Pro. Um, so you can look that up on our website. It's super awesome. It's our newest, um, newest accessory that we have, newest product. Okay. Awesome, so let's go on now to the Portrait 3. So the Portrait 3 is back here. I'm gonna go ahead and bring it up for you. This is our cute, tiny machine. I love the Portrait 3. I know I told you guys that I am a Cameo 4 user at home, but I would actually love to have a portrait at my house because I don't have a de designated crafting room at my house. I did have one and then I had a baby four months ago and the designated crafting slash my office room got created into the baby nursery. Um, so this is the Portrait 3 and I think it's perfect because you can pull it out and use it on your kitchen counter or your kitchen table or even a very small desk and it just has a really really small footprint for your crafting and I know that when we're crafting we're pulling out all kinds of materials and kind of just making a mess right that's part of crafting and so it's really helpful to have a smaller um, machine and that's what the portrait 3 is great for we talk about the portrait 3 being portable and while it does require cords the reason we say that is because it's small enough that you can fit it in a backpack which I have done before um, and it's it's just super, super easy um, to carry around. Also, you can see I can hold it in just one hand like this. Um, the Cameo 4 is quite a bit heavier, so that's not really as possible. But a lot of small businesses will use this um, to kind of take it to clients' houses. And actually, I was at Costco a couple weeks ago, and I was in the electronics section, and they had um, the, a big sign that said, customize your new phone case. And um, all of a sudden I noticed there was a Portrait 3 sitting right there, um, which is this machine. And so they were using it at Costco to customize people's phone cases, which I thought was really, really fun because it's not like it was for sale there, but it's just a use that I saw for it. So super awesome. Um, so this is the Portrait 3. A lot of people will use this to make stickers and um, just eight and a half by 11 paper materials as well, because that's the size that it is. Um, and here at Silhouette, we do sell nine inch vinyl as well. So you don't have to cut down your vinyl to be able to use it for this. Um, but this is a really awesome product, especially if you're doing print and cut projects like stickers or labels or things like that, um, because it's just the perfect size for that. And it works really, really well. And then also the auto sheet feeder that somebody asked about before can be used with this machine as well and it can feed different um, pages in and you can just leave it and you don't have to load each page. So the, that's a super awesome application with the Portrait 3. Does anybody have any questions so far? Oh, Kelly put um, the link about the auto sheet feeder into the chat. So if you're interested in that in our newest product, go ahead and click on that to check it out. Um, and then Somebody said, congrats on the newborn. Thank you so much. He's so great. He's so much fun. <laughs> so now I'm going to show you guys um, the 
Cameo Pro. And let's see, who was our Cameo Pro user? Let's see, Donna has a Cameo Pro. And I think there was one other person, Tanya. Okay, so Ta Donna and Tanya, um, you guys already have the Cameo Pro, I guess. So this is for everybody else. Um, but this is the Cameo Pro. And this is the largest DIY cutting machine on the market. It can cut 24 inches in width and up to 10 feet in length also. You'll notice that it is exactly the same as the Cameo 4, other than the fact that it is elongated. It is super stretched um, to cut double the width that the Cameo 4 does. Um, so you can also purchase this at Michael's, you can purchase it in store, or you can purchase it online. Um, all of the machines you can shop in store or online. Um, some stores might not have all of the color options for the original Cameo 4, um, but you can shop all of them online. And then this machine can cut all of the same things that the Cameo 4 can. So you'll see that it also has this dual carriage system right here to use your standard number one tools and then your specialty number two tools as well. Um, I know Kelly taught a class for Michaels right when the Cameo Pro came out that was a cute little fabric stuffed bear that she made with the Cameo Pro. Um, and that was a super fun class. And I've always thought that would be a really, really fun um, activity to do with like little kids to make little personal, personalized stuffed animals or things like that. Um, so this is the Cameo Pro. Does anybody have any questions about these? Um, and also I was gonna ask Kelly or Christina if you guys could put the links to the machines in the chat also. Um, maybe Christina can do that um, so that everybody can shop the machines on michaels.com. That would be awesome. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this down here because it does take up a lot of room. If you're gonna buy the Cameo Pro, I recommend that you already have an idea of where you're gonna use it in your house because you do need to have enough room to lay it across the table and have it be supported completely. And then it also needs to be able to move the mat forward and back. Um, so it does require kind of a large space, but it's a super awesome machine. Um, a couple projects that I've made with it, one of my friends is getting married and we made a giant acrylic sign and we um, put you know, their wedding details on the sign. That was really, really fun. And then um, last year for Valentine's Day, I just made some giant heart Valentines that I gave to my family members. Um, I just cut giant hearts out on poster board and then um, just wrote a really, really nice message on them with some candy bars. Um, so that was a fun project too. And I'm trying to think, Kelly's made some really awesome giant snowflakes. That's possibly one of my favorite projects I've ever seen here at Silhouette is Kelly's giant snowflakes she made with the Cameo 4. Um, Hey, so let's go ahead and move on. Okay, so I'm just gonna go ahead and pull the computer back over here and now we're gonna jump into the Silhouette Design Store. So I'm going to start my screen share for all of you. And then um, I already have my Silhouette Studio open down here. If you don't have Silhouette Studio open, just locate it in your applications down here or on your computer, wherever those are, and then double click it and it will open up Silhouette Studio. Right here, you can see that mine might look a little bit different than yours because I'm using the business edition today. Um, everything I'm gonna be showing you today can be done with the basic edition, um, but I'm using the business edition, which is an upgraded one-time payment that you can pay um, for extra tools um, that you can use to design things in Silhouette Studio. So um, you don't need to use that, um, but I am using that today. So if, I, if you see that I have a couple more tools here than you have, that's the difference. And um, I'm going to pull up the chat too so I can see you guys' questions. And then I think the easiest way to locate to the design store is just to come up here to the tab up here and then click store. And I would love to get your input on what you want to see cut today. So we are gonna be using vinyl. Um, and let me stop my screen share real quick. I just have this little glass jar. Um, that I'm going to be putting a vinyl item on. So just, I'm gonna be putting it like right here. And I would love your input on what you wanna see on this. So I can show you how to search a design in the design store and then how to purchase that design that we find. So if somebody wants to put a suggestion in the comments for me, that would be great. Um, we could do, I only have pink vinyl. So I was gonna say we could do a snowflake, but I don't have white vinyl, so it would be a pink snowflake. Valentine's Day, okay, awesome. I was thinking a heart would be super fun. 
So um, I'm going to go ahead and screen share again. And then when you come to the design store, there's a whole lot of tabs right here. Um, and always make sure to pay attention to these banners because it'll always have a free design of the week that we change out every Tuesday. And then there's always sales going on. Some, right now it's a printable sale. Um, so always make sure to check those out. And then you can also come down here to what's new. And there's tons of new um, files that our artists have recently put in. These are so fun. There's a ton of Valentine's Day ones already. And if you're looking for like a seasonal project, I think this is the place to go because our designers are always designing new things for all of the holidays. And then down here, there's also trending designs um, that you can click that are designs that are being downloaded a lot in the design store. So make sure to check out all of these tabs and just kind of, I love this house. Oh my gosh, this just caught my attention and I think this is so cute. So um, make sure to just come here and explore all of the different categories that we have up here. Um, but the easiest thing that I use the design store for is when I know what I wanna make. So we wanna make a Valentine's thing. Um, I just wanna come up here to the search bar and I'm just going to type Valentine. And you can really type anything, right? You can type um, a heart, you could type Cupid, you could, um, type candy, you know, be mine, anything like that, um, that you could download in the design store. And then we're just going to pick one. So I think this one would be super awesome to show you guys this Valentine um, word art. That would be pretty simple to show you guys today. Um, so I'll give you guys two options. We are gonna do just a one color um, design today. So, we could do, let's see, we could, those are two colors, but we could do this heart, this little um, kind of crochet heart, or we can do the word art, the Be My Valentine. So go ahead and tell me in the chat which one you guys would rather see. I'm just going to pull up the screen share or the chat, sorry. So we have this crochet heart, word art, perfect. Okay. So I'm going to come up to the top and Here's the one I was gonna do. So I'm just going to click it and then to um, add this to my cart, I just click this little blue shopping cart right here. And then I'm just going to press this arrow to take me to my cart. And it looks like I also had a font in here. Um, I don't need that right now. So I'm just gonna delete it. But when you, you come to your cart, you'll see that all of your, um, items will be listed here. We're only buying one item right now, but if you are going to sell anything with this design, maybe you have an Etsy shop and you're going to create mugs or cards or something like that, um, you do need to buy the commercial license just one time and that's unlimited for however many times you're going to sell it. Um, so it's just a one-time payment. This one is $3.96 and um, you can purchase this um, commercial license and sell it over and over again. If you're not using a silhouette machine and you're using a different brand of cutting machine, you can also buy the SVG file and use that in a different um, cutting machine software. So I'm just using the silhouette one, so I don't need to check either of these boxes, but I'm just going to come down here to the bottom and then I'm just going to click checkout and it will ask me to enter my password um, just one more time. So I'm going to do that and then I'm just going to press submit. And then um, that's all we have to do to buy a design in the design store. So now we're going to go back into Silhouette Studio. And um, the last time I was using Silhouette Studio, I was just using a little scrap of vinyl, which is why I'm zoomed in like this. So when you open your Silhouette Studio, it's not going to look like this. So I'm going to show you that you can use these little magnifying glasses up here to zoom out or zoom in. So I just zoomed out a couple of clicks. You can zoom in with the plus magnifying glass. Um, but I just want you guys to be able to see um, the whole mat that we're going to be using today. So I need to reset this to the default um, since I'm using the Cameo 4 today. So I do have the Cameo for matte, but right now you can see this material is just five by five. So it's really, really small. 
So um, we are going to be using a smaller piece of vinyl today, but I'm just going to go ahead and return this to the standard 12 by 12 size for now, so that when it comes time to resize our media on the mat, I'll be able to show you guys how to do that. Um, so this is what it will look like when you open up Silhouette Studio majority of the time for you. So if you're using a Portrait 3 machine or a Cameo 4 machine or a Cameo Plus machine, which is 15 inches, um, you're just going to come over here and make a couple adjustments and it's numbered for you, one, two, three, four. Um, so just go down the list right here and first you'll select the machine you're using. If you're using the Cameo 4, chances are that's what your software will default to anyway. Um, and then the feed type for most of us is going to be auto manual. Um, the only reason it wouldn't be is if you were using the auto sheet feeder, that new product that we have. So most of us are going to be using the auto feed or the manual feed type, probably I would say 90% of the time. And then you're going to select the cutting mat size that you're using. I'm using the cameo mat, so I'm not going to change that. And then we are going to change our media size now. So I'm going to go ahead and stop my screen share and show you how I know um, what size I want to make this vinyl that I'm going to use. So this is my little jar that I'm going to be using today. And I'm just going to go ahead and peel this blue protective cover off of my mat. This cover comes with all of the mats you purchase at Silhouette. And um, it just works to keep your mat from getting um, dusty and dirty when you're not using it. And that, that will help it keep stay sticky for longer. So I'm just going to take my mat and then I'm going to lay it directly on top of the, the item that I'm using. And the reason that I'm doing that is because um, it has a one inch grid on it that you can see. So I'm basically using this mat as a ruler right now. Um, and it looks like my jar is about four and a half inches tall before it starts to taper right here. Um, so I don't want to make my design four and a half inches tall, um, but I think I'm going to make it three and a half. Um, and that will give me some nice room on above the design and below the design um, to kind of have some breathing room for my design so it's not curving and running into the top or bottom. And then um, it looks like my width, I don't really want to make it more than three and a half inches either. So I just kind of used the mat to kind of guesstimate um, how big my piece of vinyl should be um, that I'm going to be using for this project. Um, I hope that made sense. You can use a ruler if you want to. I just already have my mat right here handy because I'm going to use it to cut on the machine. So I always like to share that tip um, to use the mat to measure your space. So I'm going to go ahead and change this. So I said that my design could be three and a half by three and a half. So I'm actually going to make my width four and my height four. And I could make it even smaller. I could make it 3.75 or even 3.6 if I want to. Um, but the back of my vinyl also has a one inch grid on it. Um, so making it four by four just makes it easy for me to cut and prepare my mat. So now we're going to go ahead and add that, um, add our design into our Silhouette software. So to do that, we're going to come up here where we went to the design store and we're going to go to our library. And I'm just going to click that tab. And as you can see, I have a lot of designs in my library. <laughs> I have over 1400. And um, when you come to your library, after you purchase something from the design store, you're going to see this little sinking, um, I don't know what you would call it, sinking icon, I guess. Now it's sunk, so we're good. Um, if it isn't sinking when you open it up, you can just click this little button right here and it will resync. And But when it syncs, it just adds the designs that you just purchased from the design store um, to this library that you have. And make sure that you're logged in. I am logged into my account, so you need to be logged in on the design store and logged in on Silhouette Studio to sync the two together. So now, um, a super great feature that I like in Silhouette Studio is that you can search your designs by keyword. So just like we searched um, for a design in the design store, I can start typing Valentine 
and I have a couple different designs that I've purchased over the years. This Karina Gardner banner, I'm going to show it to you guys, is one of my favorite projects. This was actually a class that I taught a couple years ago for Valentine's Day. So if you're interested in a really fun Valentine's project, go ahead and find this on Michael's YouTube channel because it is a super beautiful, super fun project. Um, but these are all just some different designs that I've used. Um, and I'm going to, we're going to use this one today. This is the one that we bought. So to open this in the design store, you simply just, or not the design store, sorry, the studio, you just double click that design. And you'll notice that it opens at whatever the default size the artist set it to was. So it looks like this artist um, defaulted the size to be the maximum size you could use on a cameo mat. Um, but this is much too big for our little jar that we're going to be using today. So we just simply um, need to resize this design um, to fit in our little four by four square. And I told you that I wanted my design to be about three and a half inches um, wide. So what we're going to do, and it looks like this design is actually a square. Um, so it's going to be or it's not quite a square, it's almost a square. It's a little bit taller than it is wide. Um, so we are going to make it 3.5 inches wide. And there's two different ways that you can do this. The first way you can do it is you can just click your design and then use these little tiny white boxes. If you hover over them, it, your cursor will change to two little arrows and you can just drag that box down until it's around the size that you want. And if you don't care about having it be exactly 3.5 inches tall, this method totally works. Um, but if you're doing a project where you need it to be an exact size, which I know a lot of the time um, we are making things that we need it to be a certain size, um, there's another way that you can do it. So you'll just click your design and then you'll come up here to our toolbar along the top. And you'll notice a width measurement right here and a height measurement right here. And there's also a padlock. So sometimes the padlock will be unlocked like this. And this means that if you adjust one of these, it won't um, change the other to the ratio that it's currently at. So a time when you would use um, the padlock unlocked is maybe like if I had a square or a rectangle right here, and I just wanted to make it taller instead of wider, I would just unlock it and then I would make it, you know, four inches tall. And you can see that it didn't change the width, but it did change the height. Um, so that's when you would want that padlock unlocked. However, if we have it unlocked and we change this to, um, you know, six inches tall, it stretches my design. And I don't want that. So um, when you're using a design, you're going to want to make sure that this lock is closed. And then we're simply just going to change the height right here to 3.5. And I'm just using the keys on my keyboard to change that. And so you can see that, like I said, this design is almost a square. It's 3.5 inches tall and 3.42 inches wide. So the next thing that I'm going to show you is just how to center this um, in your piece of vinyl that you have. And the only thing you have to do is you just have to come up here to this little um, rectangle with kind of like a cross hatch in the middle of it and you just click that and it will vertically and horizontally align it to your page that you're using whether your page is eight and a half by 11 12 by 12 4 by 4 it will put it in the center every time um so i'm just going to open this up so um yes christina mentioned that sometimes it will think that you're working offline if your library isn't syncing. And I have noticed that actually sometimes when I've been teaching this class. Um, so I'll just demonstrate that real quick. When you're in the library, um, go ahead and come down here. And even if this work offline is not checked, sometimes it will be checked, but sometimes um, if your library isn't syncing, I just come up here and I click this, check the box and then unclick it. And then that has always worked for me to start syncing my library. So um, that's one thing you can try, um, Heather. But yeah, it looks like Kelly and Christina gave you some helpful tips also. So then um, we're gonna go ahead and start cutting now. Well, we're actually gonna prepare our mat and load our mat before 
um, we do that. So I'm going to stop my screen share for a second. And um, I have hot pink vinyl today, and I also have like a light pink. So go ahead in the chat, somebody tell me which vinyl you would like me, you would like me to use today. So the hot pink or the light pink. And I don't have a preference either way. So let's see. We have two and two. One more person. Okay, hot pink. Hot pink wins. So um, I'm going to go ahead and take this vinyl. This is one of those nine inch rolls that we sell here at Silhouette. Um, and you can use the nine inch roll matless in your machine also. But today I'm going to be using a mat. So um, we don't need to change anything really. We just need to cut a four inch square um, to fit on our mat. And you'll notice also that this, just like the mat, it's probably kind of hard to see on the camera, but it does have a one inch grid on the back also, which makes it really, really easy to cut your um, piece that you want to use. So I'm just going to take some scissors and cut four inches over and four inches down. And it doesn't have to be a perfect cut either. If you're using, um, if your design goes all the way to the close to the edges of your um, project, then you will want to make your cut very specific, but mine doesn't go that close. So I'm going to now just take this little square that I have and line it up with the corner of my mat. And you can see that I have a little bit of extra down here, um, but that's okay, it doesn't really matter. And then I'm just going to come over here to my machine. And to load your machine, you're going to press this upward arrow right here um, on your control pad. And then once it starts blinking, you're going to line this edge, oh, sorry, I'm a little off there. This edge of your mat, up with this little gray arrow and line right here. And that's all you have to do to load it. There's a sensor right here um, that will read when there's material there and it will automatically load. And this allows us to be able to load the, ma the mat with both hands. And this is actually a fairly new feature in Silhouette Studio um, that makes it so you don't have to just hold the mat and then try and load it with your other hand because um, that can kind of make a crooked load a lot of the time. And you want your machine, your mat to be feeding nice and even forward and back. So one thing I do want to point out, um, I was using this to cut a matless material last time. And so I had moved in this little dial over here. Um, but today, um, we're going to move this back. Um, and when you're using matless materials, this just holds the vinyl in place a little bit better than this one does. Um, since you don't have the extra mat on the side to account for. So to move that back, you're just going to push this little lever down and then push down on this little lock button and then just slide it out until it clicks into place. And it will, cl it will click into place and you won't be able to just slide it anymore. And then you'll just need to put that bar back down by flipping that lever up. Okay. Um, so now I'm going to load the machine. So I'm just going to or load the mat. So I'm just going to press that upward arrow, start it blinking, as you can see. And now I'm just going to hold my mat right here. And it just pulls it in really, really slowly and really, really evenly. And then I forgot to mention this about all of the machines that I showed you today, but they're actually Bluetooth compatible. So you just need to press this little button right here, the Bluetooth symbol, and once it turns blue, that means that it's ready to be found by your computer. And I am actually going to be using the Bluetooth option today. So um, I'm going to go ahead and start my screen share again. And then we're going to go into the send panel over here, which is the final step of um, cutting anything in Silhouette Studio. So um, right here, you can see that my machine connected down here through Bluetooth. Um, if it hadn't connected, you would be able to click this little button down here and connect to these different machines. Um, but mine is connected, so it automatically connected. And if yours isn't connected, just click this little portrait looking machine down here and then select the machine that you're using. 
And then um, it automatically reads the tool that I'm using, which is the auto blade. Not all of our tools have that feature, but most of the tools you, you'll, you will purchase for the Cameo 4 or the tool that comes with the Portrait 3 um, will automatically know what tool you have in there through auto detection. Yeah. Uh huh. Oh, yes, that is a great question. So I'm going to stop the screen share. And um, I'm going to go ahead and unload the blade. And this is a great question because when your machine comes in the mail, your blade is not going to come loaded in the machine. So the first thing that you need to do, I actually am going to unload this though <laughs> to demonstrate this. Um, so what you need to do is you just will begin by pulling this little number one tab and it will kind of click out, um, pull it kind of lightly. It's not super hard to open. Um, and then you're just going to take the blade and push it straight down in so the numbers are facing you. And you're just going to push that as far down as it will go. And I like to hold the blade down while I do the next part, um, which is I'm just going to put a little bit of upward pressure on it. And then I'm going to push inward and it will kind of do like a double click. Um, if you just push once, like right now, I just clicked in and it didn't lock twice. So um, you just need to make sure you hold it down and then push in and it will kind of like do two little clicks. Um, I don't know how else to describe it. I know it's probably hard to see on the screen, um, but as long as you push down and then push inward, you should be good. But just make sure that you push the blade down because that's the most important part. So I hope that answered that question. I'm just reloading this. Okay, and perfect, Tanya. I'm so glad that you're new to the machine. Once upon a time, I was new to the machine too. I had never used a silhouette machine when I started working here um, about three years ago. And there's still new things that I learn all the time. Last month when we did this class, somebody asked how to um, curve text and I had no idea. So um, there's things that we learn all the time with silhouette. Um, there's just different things that we can always add to our tool belt. So I'm gonna go ahead and start my screen share again. And um, so now we're back in our um, send panel. And now we just need to select the different materials that we're using. And it looks like last time I used matte vinyl. And coincidentally, that's what I'm using again today. Um, but if I was using a different material, you just click this drop down menu. And as you can see, there are literally hundreds of preset materials um, that you can select. Um, and you can also search up here, you can start typing vinyl, and then it will bring up, you know, all of these different kinds of vinyl. Um, so I am using matte vinyl today. And in my last class, I tried to cut it on a one and it didn't quite cut all the way through, probably just because my blade isn't brand new. Um, so I'm going to cut this on a two. And I actually prefer to cut my vinyl on a blade depth of two. Um, I've just found in my three years of using the Silhouette machines that that works good for me every time. So you don't have to, you can keep the blade depth at a one. And if it doesn't cut through the first time, you can always just click send again and it will cut through the second time for you. Um, but that's really the only setting that I ever change. I don't really ever change the force or the speed. Um, Sometimes the passes, if you're using like, if you're cutting chipboard or something, you're going to want to make more than one pass on that um, to cut all the way through the material. Um, but that's kind of all you have to do. So if you're a beginner, just select the material that you're using and that's it. You don't have to do anything else. And then I'm just going to come down here and click send. So Tamika asks if um, you have to trim down your material before cutting smaller designs like I did today. And you actually do not have to. Um, I just did it to show you, I think, kind of the easiest way to do it. Um, and I also just like to keep my rolls nice and neat. Um, but you could cut a 12 by 12 piece and put it on the mat, or you could cut matless. 
and then you could just cut it after. Um, so that's another option that you can do. Um, there's a whole lot of different ways to do it. I do think the machine sound is probably being a little bit amplified by the microphone since I am sitting right next to it. But um, it definitely isn't the most quiet. Um, I don't know if I would do this like with, if my baby was napping. But then again, um, I have done it a lot of different scenarios and it's been good. So, um, but I do think it's a little bit loud right now. Um, oh, let's see. Do you know how long rewards points last in the design store? Um, I am pretty sure those don't expire. Kelly said that also. And um, as long as you buy design store credits, um, they don't expire. If you buy a design store subscription, which is different, um, if you buy a subscription, you can buy a different level of subscription. And like that's like $9.99 a month or something like that. And you get a certain dollar amount of credits to spend. And those do expire at the end of every month. And then they reset as long as you're subscribing. But if you buy design credits, which is what I've done in the design store and what I tell like my mom and my sisters to do, um, then you just buy them one time and it's at a discounted rate always. And um, those credits don't ever expire as long as you still have the same um, as long as you log into the same account and you can change your email and everything if you have a new email, um, but those don't expire. So it just finished cutting. Oh, Tanya is actually following step by step. Wow, Tanya, I'm impressed. That's super awesome. Um, and I'm super excited that you're going to be done with your project. I do have to ask though, because I think you have the Cameo Pro. So did you make this design small or are you cutting it at pro size? I do have to know. Um, small okay sounds good um because this would be a really really fun design to cut in vinyl and put on like your window or something I think um for the holidays but so it just finished cutting and um I know that you guys can't see it on the camera um but when you cut with your machine you'll be able to actually see the cuts um it just is kind of like shadowed a little bit almost and before I ever unload a design, I always check to make sure that it cut, whether I'm using paper, heat transfer, vinyl, felt, fabric, anything. Um, because if it didn't cut all the way through, you can simply just go back to Silhouette Studio and press send again, and it will cut in the exact same spot. If I unload this and then load it again, it will cut in a similar spot, but it might not be exactly on top of my original cut. So I'm just going to go ahead and take this hook tool right here, which is a silhouette accessory that you can buy at Silhouette or Michaels has tons of different hooks that you can purchase also. And um, I'm just going to go ahead and try to pull out one of my heart pieces. And you can see that that come, came out super well. You can see the little heart right here. Um, and so I'm, I know it cut through. And so I'm just going to go ahead and unload that by pressing this little downward arrow. And I'm actually not going to do anything else with the silhouette machine today. Um, so I can turn it off by just pressing the power button on the side over here. And then I just close it by um, tugging that cover kind of lightly and then pulling it down. And then I'm going to do the same thing with my mat. I'm just going to put that cover back on top to make sure that it stays nice and sticky for as long as possible. And I will say that my mats stay sticky for quite a long time, especially if you're using it to cut vinyl or heat transfer. Those aren't materials that have um, any stray fibers or anything like that, like paper or felt might or fabric. So if you're using vinyl and heat transfer, um, mostly with your mats, they should last you a long time. Um, I actually, at home, I had some new mats um, that I hadn't opened yet. And I just barely threw away the mats that I have been using since I started working here at home. So that was years ago. And um, I cut a lot of vinyl and heat transfer at home. I don't cut a ton of um, paper or felt on those mats at home. Um, so 
I've been able to use them for a really long time. And same goes for your blade. If you're cutting mostly heat transfer and vinyl, it's going to last really, really long. If you're cutting paper, paper dulls it a little bit quicker, but I think I've used a paper blade for a good six months at least. And then um, the rotary blade, I've only ever had one rotary blade and I use it quite a lot too. So um, they last a good amount of time. So now what we're gonna do is we are going to um, weed this design. So weeding is just taking away the pieces that we don't want. Um, so I'm just going to start at the corner over here. And then just slowly peel my vinyl. And I think it works better if you take a more um, sharp angle. If you're pulling it from like up here, it's okay. But if you're pulling back here, it works really good. And it looks like we actually did lose that little heart. So just go slow. Um, if you if it feels like something is sticking or not pulling or not pulling easily, I just like to um, poke it with my little tool. And it is very sticky, so keep that in mind. <laughs> and this is a very thin design that we chose today, um, which can be a little bit trickier. I wouldn't necessarily say it's hard, but um, sometimes it can be tricky to leave the correct pieces in place. I'm going to go ahead and take my scissors and cut. And it looks like I actually did um, accidentally rip my little E right here. Um, but I'm going to show you that even when that happens, um, you can still use this project. Um, you don't have to recut it and it will still turn out pretty good. So I'm just gonna weed that piece first and be really, really gentle with the outline of the letter. And as you can see, so it, it tore like right here um, and you really can't even tell. I mean, I'm gonna have to be a little bit careful when I'm transferring that. Um, but it's pretty, pretty forgiving, I think, since it is such a sticky material um, to, if you rip it, it's okay. And I would just say my biggest tip for not ripping it is going a little bit slower than I did. I probably went a little bit too fast. So now I'm just taking out all of the pieces that we don't need. Some people really like weeding their designs and some people really hate it. So I like weeding designs. Um, I've done a couple really, really intricate designs um, on different things and that can get a little bit taxing. Um, but I like to just flip on some music or turn on a podcast or a TV show or something. And um, that always helps. Especially if you're doing something, repeating it over and over again. Like if you are making something with this design for your family members or something and you're weeding like, I don't know, 10 or something like that, maybe your coworkers, um, just make sure to just take it slow and um, do something while you do it as well. And I would say that this design is actually kind of on the easier level because even though it is thin, um, it has pretty decent sized pieces that we're taking out. Um, one of my favorite designers in the design store is Wild Pilot. And she does just these beautiful floral designs that are so gorgeous. And she has some really, really fun ones that um, say like, 
be kind and it has just like all these flourishes behind it or um, I think it says like hope or faith or love or something like that they're kind of a set that she's done and I love them they're totally my style but they take forever to weed <laughs> so if you're new I would start out with a design that kind of has bigger pieces to weed rather than small ones because even this piece that I'm doing right now this little thin one is pretty pretty thin I'm having kind of a hard time getting it to there we go lift up some of my oh good Christina put her artist page in there wild pilot um, some of my other favorite designers are Lori Whitlock for paper crafts. Um, I love her designs. And then also Karina Gardner. Um, they're both amazing. They've both taught classes for us here at Silhouette. Um, and they just make such fun paper crafts. Um, let's see, who are some of my other favorites? I'm trying to think. Nick Squirrel does really, really beautiful, intricate um, work um or tanya but i think she's ukrainian and um she makes super beautiful designs she does all kinds of designs um some of them are really intricate files like this and some of them are 3d files um that you can make with paper so those are some of my favorite artists in the design store my favorite font artist is blush co fonts Cheyenne makes super beautiful, awesome fonts. I don't know how she makes so many fonts so fast, but she's always putting super cute and trendy fonts in the design store. So Bonnie asked if Silhouette offers introductory classes or just Michaels. So right now we are just offering um, these classes through Michaels, but we have offered um, classes um, just through Silhouette in the past. So just always check our social media channels um, to see what's up and coming or our blog. And um, that will help you know when there's more introductory classes. Um, when I'm all done with this, I'm gonna show you the class that I'm teaching next week. And I'm gonna be using the rotary blade to demonstrate how to make a super, super fun name banner. And this is a fun project because it's not necessarily a beginner project because we're using the rotary blade. Um, but that being said, I would say it's a fairly easy project for the rotary blade. Um, so if you're interested in learning how to use like a secondary tool, like I talked about, um, make sure to join the class because it's going to be really, really fun. And I think the project is very cute. Um, that we're doing. So that is a class that I'm teaching next week. And then Kelly, I think, is teaching a class this month too. And yes, Kelly also said that we have um, a YouTube channel that has tons of videos. Um, actually, very recently, we've started um, releasing even more beginner videos. We did um, a jungle party series that's on there that all of the designs you can get for free in the design store um, to kind of create a little birthday party. Um, but the kind of applications and the techniques we're using, you could use for so many different projects, um, not just a birthday party. But if you're interested in learning kind of beginner silhouette introductory things, th that's an awesome series to learn a lot about the software too. They're very software heavy classes where we use all kinds of different tools. Um, so you can check that out on our YouTube as well. So I hope you guys enjoyed listening to me talk as we weeded that design. It kind of had a lot of little pieces. Um, but now I'm just going to take some transfer tape. This is what transfer tape looks like. It's shiny on one side and waxy on the other side. This is the covering. And um, transfer tape is reusable, so make sure you save the backing um, and you can use the same piece over and over again. And I'm actually not going, well, I think I am going to cut it down a little bit, actually. So I'm just going to lay it on top and then, yes, and somebody asked, the class next week is a free class also, just like this one. So make sure to join. Um, it's going to be really fun. And then Christina also put the, oh yes, um, the jungle party videos. And I totally forgot what Kelly's class was, 
but it is um, storage labels. And I'm super excited because I actually, since Christmas, have been going through and reorganizing my whole house. Um, so, I mean, that's what January is for, right, is organization. So make sure you check out Kelly's class next week. It's going to be super fun. So um, I just put that clear piece on top, and now I'm just using this silhouette scraper tool to kind of thin it out, or sorry, smooth it out, and to stick the vinyl to the transfer tape. If you don't have this scraper tool, you could use anything that has a hard edge, like a bone folder or even a credit card. I've used a credit card before too. So I'm just going to roll that out, and then. Um, I'm going to pull this back and sometimes um, these little dainty designs don't want to stick to the transfer tape so when that happens I just fold as I go. I just kind of make these creases and it makes it so the vinyl doesn't stick to the wax paper. And once I figured that out vinyl crafting just got a lot easier for me. When I first started out, I don't know why, but it was so hard for me and it's not a hard thing. I mean, this is a beginner class and I chose to show you how to cut vinyl, but at the start it was just kind of hard for me, but that is my favorite tip. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and I have this jar now and I'm just going to take my piece of transfer tape and then I'm just going to kind of hover on top until I find a placement that I like. And then I'm just going to push down in the middle first and then push down the sides. And this just helps you not get any bubbles in your actual um, project. And now after I've done that, and pushed it down. I'm just going to go ahead and pull back the transfer tape. And I know it's kind of hard to see on that table. So maybe there we go. You can see it better right there. Maybe I'll hold it like that. And you can see this super cute, super fun design. This is actually like a cookie jar, snack jar type thing. Um, it has a little lid that goes with it. So I think this would be super fun to fill with um, like holiday treats. My mom kind of started doing that once she started having grandkids, um, not when we were in the house, but now that she's a grandma and, you know, the fun one, um, she has little cookie jars in her house that in her kitchen that she'll fill with like, um, she had like Halloween color M&Ms um, for Halloween or um, she had like, I think Reese's um, Christmas trees for Christmas, candy canes, things like that. So you could get like juju hearts or cinnamon lips or holiday colored M&Ms, the Valentine's ones and put them in this and it would be super cute. So just some ideas that you could do or you could make cookies for your coworkers or family members and put them in this too. So those are just some fun ideas. I guess we have caramels right here too, um, is, which is what was in this when we grabbed it. But thank you guys so much for joining us today. I just want to ask one more time and um, see if there's any questions before we end the class. Um, I've tried to go nice and slow, so hopefully you're not too intimidated and you feel like you can get your silhouette machine out this afternoon or later this week and actually create this project. Um, Tanya, did you finish the project? I'm curious. Perfect. Awesome. So exciting. So fun. So thank you guys so much for joining us. Um, it doesn't look like we have any other questions. So just make sure to register for our upcoming silhouette classes um, that you can find on the Michaels page and also to follow us on social media for other silhouette updates. Thanks so much for joining us and have a great rest of your day.